Welcome to the channel. Welcome to my basement. So I recently got a, it's called an Insight CTS-2. It's basically a monitor that becomes like a digital dashboard for your engine control module. I've been considering getting one of these for a while because it's, it's very problematic for me to be um, driving my, my bug with the Ecotec and uh, not have all of this information available. What I've been doing so far is I bring my scan tool and just occasionally when I stop, I'll plug it in and I'll check a couple of parameters and see if, see if I have any codes or whatnot. And I hooked it up yesterday. I haven't driven the bug with it yet, but I started it up and I set up some of the gauges and, and checked out all that stuff and realized that this will tell me my fuel level because in my bug on my Ecotec, I'm actually using factory uh, fuel pumps and it still has the one of my I've got two fuel pumps in there one of them I left the uh, float on there for the fuel level so now I can hook up my uh, my my fuel level center which is awesome however once I uh, set up the gauge to read that it told me zero percent and I realized that I never hooked up that wire so what I have to do now is track down the wiring and I need to run the wire from my sending unit to the plug on my ECM, my engine control module, so that the Edge Insight has data that it can tell me as to how much fuel I have left. So this is, uh, this is my service manual. It's a service manual that I made and I'll put a link up in the description as to where you can go to uh, download this information. It's through a GM website and they have a deal where for $20 you can subscribe to their service for three days. Basically all I did was subscribe for those three days and then download my ass off for those three days so I could get all my information. So on the first page here we're looking at plug what GM is calling C1 and you can see that it's blue. Now if we go three pages in here, uh, where the hell is it? Okay. See if you guys can read that. This says fuel level sensor signal. It's circuit number 1589. And it looks like the wire should be purple. And it's pin number 44 on plug C1. Okay, so that tells me where it's coming from on the ECM. Now if I go to what I'm calling connector pins, and then I've already got it tabbed here a couple pages in. I have a wiring diagram for the fuel plug, fuel, ugh, fuel pump and sender assembly. There's four wires that come off of there. There is fuel pump supply voltage, which for some reason I didn't highlight that. There is the fuel level sensor signal. And if we look, that is also circuit 1589 and it's purple so that's definitely the wire that we want to connect to the ECM and then there's two grounds it doesn't tell you which ground is for fuel pump supply voltage and which is for the fuel level sensor signal so my guess would be that when I wired this up the first time I just landed both of these grounds so I'm assuming when I go up there this fuel level sensor signal the purple wire is not going to be landed and I'm gonna to have to connect that and run it to my ECU or ECM. Okay, so now we're out here in the bug. I've already torn my wire loom off and whatnot to get things exposed, but here's what we're looking at. This is my uh, fuel pump, my fuel pump sending unit. So this has the fuel pump and the sending unit in it. This is the plug. Here is our four wires. We've got the purple, which is the sending unit, uh, the gray, which is the fuel pump, and then this beige and this black are grounds. So if we follow them around, we'll see that the beige and the black are connected, as is the gray is connected to this red wire, which is 12 volts for the fuel pump. And then the two black wires actually come down here and they terminate on my ground bus bar. This purple wire right here is what we have to get connected. So here's my ECM, here's my three plugs. Um, so it was plug one, which that's labeled on the casting of the aluminum here. You can't see it, but that says J1, right? Yeah, that's J1, J2, J3. So this is the plug that I need to get to. So 
Um, I'm just going to take this apart, expose the wires, and I'm assuming once we find it, it's pin number 44, we'll have to explore for it, but there'll probably be about an eight inch whip coming off of here that's just terminated. So I'll find that, pull it out, and then we'll do a butt splice with a purple wire that will run back to the sending unit. All right, so what we know is this is the right plug. It's pin number 44 and it's purple. Now I already see a purple wire there, but um, usually they have numbers on here at the end. I'm trying to get this so you guys can see it, but you're probably not gonna be able to. Uh, so on the end here, this says, this says one, so that means that on this row it starts with number one. That says 15, yeah, okay, so there's 14 per row. So this is one through 14. It starts at 15 and this starts at 29. And this starts at 43. Ah, oh, crap. Damn it. All right, so I see plug 44 right here and it's cut. Why the hell would I cut that? There's no way I would cut that. Why would I cut that? Why on earth would I cut that? Damn it. I mean, when I set this up, I cut wires that I knew I would never ever use. There's no way I would have thought I was never ever gonna use that. Damn it. I might look to see if I can actually take this plug apart because if I can take it out and push out that connector I don't want to do that because that seems very volatile but I'll see if I can do that all right so I don't know how to take this plug apart um, I'll google it I'll try to find out but I can see that there's a plastic plate on the back that needs to come off it's got some tabs up there and I actually tried to try I tried to pry that tab off and it cracked so I don't really want to mess around with this because this is on my running engine and I don't want to risk anything that's going to uh, you know make it so that it doesn't work so that I really have a lot of work to do so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put this back on I'm gonna put some zip ties on here tidy it up like I had it I'm gonna put it back on I'm gonna connect a purple wire to the sending unit and I'm gonna connect that and I'm gonna run it through my loom up to here. Here I'll just spool it up and I'll have the extra. All right, now I ran, you know, I, I took the purple wire from the fuel sending unit. I butt spliced it with a purple wire in the loom here. I put the loom all back together, zip tied everything in place just to hold everything tight. And then I've just got some extra of that purple spooled up right here so that hopefully if I get a new plug or figure out how to pull the pin on here, I can land that and correct it. Alright, so I hope you guys can hear me. Here's the display. This is all of the gauges that I have set up on it. It shows me the RPM. The fuel level obviously is zero because of my epic failure with that. Gives me my battery voltage, my engine coolant temperature, the learned throttle, I'm not sure what that is, but it sounds cool. My spark advance, incoming air temperature at the module, and then my engine load percent. With any of these, you can click on them and you can select a new PID. And then you can run through all of the, uh, the values that it's getting from your computer. And you could put it whatever you want. So anyways, guys, that's the, um, the Edge. I don't even know what they call it. CTS. I'll put a link to it in, uh, in the description. Now, unfortunately, I was super stoked to get my fuel gauge on here. I thought that was going to be awesome. And as you can see, I had an epic fail on that. Either way, 
I think I'm gonna head over to the junkyard and I'm gonna pull some plugs. They're only like, I'll probably only pay 10 or 15 bucks to grab a couple of plugs that I can experiment with and figure out how to hopefully pull those pins. If not, take the exact same plug with that wire and just splice it into this one. So unfortunately, I kind of failed on this video, but I'm going to make the video and put it out there anyways because uh, there is some good information on how to get into your wiring harness and look up the, uh, the pins and, and kind of hook things up. And I guess another lesson that I'm teaching you is when you do this, don't cut the wires all the way at the base because you might screw yourself like I just did. Uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope it's helping you out with your projects, motivating you, whatever. And I hope to see you on the next one. Take care.